Mm-hmm. Viva la vegan! Hello, I'm Lee Chantel from VivaLaVegan.net and welcome to this interview today. I have Seth Tibbet and he is the founder and the chairman of Tofurky Products, which I'm sure you've heard of. If you, have, if you don't know what we're talking about, check out tofurky.com. How are you, Seth? Doing good, good to be in Australia. Yes, it's your first time in Australia. Tell me what you love. I love the salty air and the beaches and the wonderful sun. People have been very, very friendly. And they're all the shopkeepers, people on the street. Good vibe. Yeah, we're a pretty good place over here in Australia. I think so, and I've had some good food too. Mm -hmm. Like we just had a great vegan lunch. Yeah, we just went to we're in the surface paradise in Queensland, Australia at the moment. So we just went to a place called Cardamon Pot and we had some salads and a tofu Casserole. Casserole and juice. Mm -hmm. Which is good. That would be like good. Yeah. No tempeh on the menu though. No, we saw it, but it wasn't there today, was yeah, it? Yeah, no, it was not. And Seth and I bonded over our love of tempeh. Tell right. me why you love tempeh, Seth. Well, it uh, goes back to 1978, and I was a vegan or a pure vegetarian there. And my mom was after me, like, how are you going to ever get protein? I was like, don't worry, I'm eating soybean. So I ate, I was experimenting a lot with soy grits and making burgers and patting them together. And then I went to the farm in Tennessee uh, in 1978 and discovered tempeh there. And I brought some home and I made it in this field. And Tennessee is very much like Indonesia in the mm -hmm. summer. Oh, it's about 32 oh yeah. Celsius in a day. And so we incubated it right out in the field. I just fell in love my first bite with uh, tempeh, and that was my first real commercial product in 1980 when I opened uh, Turtle Island Soy Dairy in Forest Grove, Oregon, on $2,500 of my teacher money that I was. I was a teacher naturalist. I uh, started making tempeh 100 pounds at a time. It took me all night to make 100 pounds of tempeh. And uh, then I would drive it around to the stores and work at the restaurants. That's how I got started. And when was that? That was in 1980, uh, December of 1980. And uh, you know, it was a very uh, exciting time for me to be in business because I had never been in business before. And didn't know anything about it. And uh, I figured it would be a good thing for me to learned a little bit about business, so I went to a free business class from these old business uh, successful entrepreneurs. And there was this big room full of people, and the guy gets up and he says, how many of you people are out there to save the world? And I went, that's me. And I looked around, and I'm the only yes. hand up, and then he goes, I thought so. And how many of you are out to make money? And everybody went, Whoa! Hey, that's me! And I was like, oh man, the first five minutes of business school and I've already flunked my first test. But, uh, Did he say that was a good thing or a bad thing? He I inferred that the main reason to be in business is to make money. Yeah. And of course, you know, now that I've been in business, I understand that in order to pay people well and in order to expand your business, you do need to make money and profit in order to do good things and we love giving money away and supporting good causes too. But uh, you know, our mission has never been personal wealth. It's yeah. more just trying to encourage people to be more plant eaters and get all from community. And tell us about the Tofurky range. You've got quite a few things. What are the most popular things? Well, we started out in 1995. Uh, we had just made tempeh for 15 years, and then in 1995 we made the first Tofurky Rose. We sold 500 of them at uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving, American Thanksgiving. And uh, that is a very popular item still. But uh, we followed that up with uh, the deli slices. And we make the most uh, deli slices of anybody in the world right now. And, and Follow that with, uh, we have six kinds of sausage, Italian, beer breads, kielbasa, spinach pesto, mm -hmm. chicken apple, uh, and andouille, so we have some very popular sausages too. We're also the biggest sausage maker in the U.S. Then we have uh, different ground or mince, I think you would call them here, and uh, we 
we still make tempeh, mm -hmm. and that's still a core product. We make lots of tempeh, but tofurkey is our main product line. Right, right now. And with the name, obviously, are you using tofu? With we are. Well? We're using organic tofu as the base in all of the uh, tofu products, mm -hmm. and uh, we use organic soybeans in all of our uh, tempeh, of course, too. Uh, sources so we don't use any genetically modified ingredients in any of our products. It's very really important. In yeah, it is. It's harder and harder to source uh, lean meat, so we just wanted to take that conversation off the table. But right? we still can't use genetically modified foods in organic yeah. agriculture, but they try. Yeah. That, but that's not possible. And now you're branching out all over the world. So you're in Australia, there's some, some people that are importing in Australia. And what, UK, Europe, where else? Yeah, we're uh, selling in Germany, in the UK, and uh, Australia. Those are the three early adopters outside the United States. Canada, of course, is a big uh, one. Uh, Brazil, Iceland. We just find that there's this consciousness all over the world. People trying to uh, get off the meat. Mm -hmm. We just in Hong Kong. We saw people out there you know, working with uh, the restaurants and the schools and government to bring more plant options to Hong Kong. And, you know, it's uh, it's a little like phenomenon. It's an exciting time. Definitely, a lot has changed, hasn't it? It really has. You know, and I know a lot of vegans and vegetarians feel like the pace of change has been too slow, but I think it's been really rather fast when you consider how it was in 1972, where you had to make your own bread and canola, you know, soy burgers, you know, with patty by hand, and now there's so many options, you know, not just in the States, but in the World and they're getting better with good options. You know, vegan cheese also yeah. coming on strong now. Meats and uh, egg replacer. Mm -hmm. It's really uh, just the beginning of a revolution that I think is going to grow in the next hundred years to the point where I believe that meat will be not the dominant paradigm right, anymore. It will be plant based foods because of so many reasons. Mm -hmm. And you, Tofurky, you just celebrated your 20th anniversary? Yeah, That's pretty Tofurky, awesome. yeah. Uh, 35 years of making tempeh mm -hmm. and Tofurky. But, uh, so yeah. what have you learned along the way? If, if anyone out there wants to start their own business, in particular a vegan business, can you give us a couple of suggestions? Well, or some things to do, some things not to do? I think, uh, you know, like the Jake says, perseverance furthers is the first one, you know, it just takes every day, you know, staying in the game, making products and not being afraid to experiment with new things if things aren't going the way you think they should, you know, it was uh, 15 years before we came up with the work, it really changed yeah. our company into more of a national international brand, you know, and we were not really making very much money before that. So just having the, I think courage to be who you are and you know, because I was always trying to in the first years be very straight and day lace and I thought don't get any humor into your marketing or anything because but that's who I was, was this humorous, fun loving guy and then with Tofurky allowed me to be Mm. Sort of more who I actually was. I think it's important to be authentic. Yes. Authentically, you, I would say, authenticity. Mm. Number, Number one. one. Mm. There you go. Be authentic. Number one tip from Seth, yeah. There you go. And just go outside of the square a bit or try new things, I guess. Hey? Yeah, be yeah. an experimental one. You know, you, uh, try to find, you know, uh, something that no one else is flying. Well, it's, it's great to be innovative because uh, you're on new ground. There's challenges with that too, but um, 
you know, if you succeed and you're the first one in the market with a new idea, I think it's uh, easier to get a name for yourself established than it is just improving on an old idea. You do both, but it's better to be innovative and strike new ground and find a niche that's not being covered. Sometimes the ideas that people tell you are the craziest ideas or the best ones. If somebody has, you know, you can tell somebody, I got this great idea, and everybody goes, oh, that's a great idea. Somebody else has probably had that great idea, and maybe it's even further along thinking about it. But sometimes, say an idea, people say, that's a stupid idea. <laughs> like making a, to a turkey out of tofu. I'm right, sure exactly. everyone was like, yeah, go for that. That's about right. You know, it's like people will go, oh. You know what? That was a stupid idea. You know, my uh, aunt Rosie, you know, in 1980, she said, "This is the stupidest idea I ever heard: selling soybeans to the moldy soybeans to the American public." You know, and then like 15 years later, we were on uh, Jeopardy, which is a big game show in Portland. My name was one of the answers, and she was in their nursing home. I told him it was a good idea from the start, you know, and she was very excited to see it. But she, you know, sometimes, who knows what's a good idea, it's a bad idea until you try it, so don't be afraid to try it. It's very true. And tell us about your um, journey to veganism. Why did you become vegan? Well, originally I became vegan in uh, 1973 after reading Diet for a Small Planet, mm -hmm. which is a book by Francis Moore. Okay. She talked about the reasons we should eat just grains as opposed to feeding them to the animals. And uh, that was struck home to me because I was an environmentalist. And so it was really environmental reasons for I became uh, vegan and vegetarian mm -hmm. at the time. And then after I came and started eating that way, I was like, wow, this is a healthy way to eat. And oh, it's good for the animals too. So it really uh, it was those three sort of things. It was like a win win win, I thought, for my body, for the planet, and for the animals. But it was really the environmental thing that really drove me initially. But uh, now, you know, having seen the horrible way that animals are treated. It's just undeniable that compassionate reasons are what I think are keeping you. Yeah. And you would have noticed a lot of changes in those years. Yeah. Uh, I think that, you know, it, that all of those reasons are bubbling up to the surface more and more in the public consciousness. And uh, I think that, you know, even though I think environmental reasons, are probably the number three reason out of those three things about why people become plant-based eaters. It's also the hardest one to refute. Yeah, quite right. And I think it's the whole part too that in the world as it moves forward, it's gonna be, you know, just it's so unsustainable the meat agricultural system producing meat that it's so much easier to produce veggie sausage than it is meat sausage when you consider growing this animal, mm. slaughtering them, cutting it all up and grinding it and all of these horrible things. Um, and the, the packaging and the distribution and all that. Right, but then, uh, you know, in veggie sausage and foods, it's much simpler and uh, environmentally friendly. And, you know, the world is, I think, uh, when you look at the habitat that's being destroyed and the rainforest in order to feed all these cattle or the animals, these billions of animals that are killing. Uh, look at Dublin, man. Like, it's already, you know, the world is teetering on the edge of insolvency. Something has to give. Something has to give. There's going to be a turning point where it just is going to be so. I mean, it's already should be obvious. I think to what you and me and Mercy and the obviousness of the efficiency of plant-based diets that uh, you have to say, well, 
when is everybody else going to get on board? Mm -hmm. I think that day's coming. Yeah. If not now, very soon. <laughs> That's right. If, uh, if not, yes. And if not us, who? Yeah. Exactly. If not now, when? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, so what are the plans for Tokyo? Are you expanding to the world? Yeah, we're just uh, expanding our range and uh, you know, trying to be innovative and more in front of us and just make uh, plant-based foods more convenient and accessible and you know, economically viable so that uh, they're within reach of the uh, world population, population. So we just want to keep pushing the limits of Vegan food, mm. vegan foods, all of the foods are vegan. Yeah, yeah. And so you've traveled a bit over the years, Seth. Where's your favorite place to go? Uh, this is right up there, I have to tell you. I've only been here two days, but uh, I love uh, getting out and traveling. You know, it's uh, beautiful to get over to Germany. Berlin, I thought, was a wonderful city. I've heard that. With, uh, for Veganism, yeah. you know, just the food, and they have the vegans, restaurant chain oh, over yeah, there, yeah. supermarket chain. Yeah. Uh, They're doing well. Interesting in Berlin, uh, an activist told me the reason people become vegan over here is more for the treatment of animals than it is health. They don't think the diet's that healthy. Wow. But they think, oh, you know, I want to do this because of the way, the horrible way animals are treated. And I think. Maybe in their history, recent history, they've seen so much suffering that, that maybe their hearts are more open. It's a very real thing to do. I thought that was fascinating to me. What, to hear what about their food? Like, do they have a lot of fresh fruit and vegetables in general? They do have yeah. very good uh, fresh fruit and vegetable yeah. supply in uh, Europe and a lot of organics. Mm -hmm. We are already states. Yeah. Um, you know, like one of the things I know that he was saying was that any diet that you thought you had to supplement like B12, mm -hmm. you know, if you had to take a pill, it was yeah. viewed as like an inferior diet. Uh, yeah. So he was putting B12 in toothpaste. Well, and he was, so yeah. you, when you brush yeah. your teeth, you got yeah. B12. Mm -hmm. You know, I know a lot more non-vegans who are B12 deficient than I know vegans. So it's not just a vegan thing. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just supplement in the morning and get my little multi. But uh, do it. I think, you know, in America, I know that the number one reason that people go vegan is for the uh, diet yeah. and the health aspects and trying to get down on their cholesterol and lower that and fat. Definitely here as well. I think yeah. one of the most important countries will be moving up. I sense in the UK too there's this love of animals mm -hmm. too that is you know, very here. Yeah, it's just they don't always connect the dots between what they eat and what they love and animals. I guess that's all of our jobs is to help connect those dots. There with an alternative when they make that connection. Exactly, that's right. Well, thank you, Seth, for making the connection and doing all the stuff that you've been doing with your food for the last 20 plus years, 35, really. Yeah, it's 35 years. Yeah. And let's try and get Tempeh to the, to the mainstream market in the next few years. I agree. <laughs> thank you for taking the time to chat to us today, and I hope you've enjoyed the lovely view of the ocean here in Surfers Paradise. Hopefully you can hear everything we have said today as well. So check out um, Seth's work at tofaki.com and see vegan.net for more interviews with inspiring people.